Configuring a Cisco router as a DHCP server, what is the story here? We've got an office, right? And we embed our router in the drywall of the office. Well, not really, but that represents your router exiting out of the office to the internet connection. Inside of your office, you have these helpless clients going, I need to get to the internet, let me out, please. So they're all connected to your switch, which connects to your router. And we have to give them IP addresses so we can set up this guy as a DHCP server. The whole goal of DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, is to hand out IP addresses to these devices and get them working. Now, is this normal? Well, sometimes. Sometimes offices bring in a Microsoft server and they configure that as a DHCP server, but in my opinion, you're comparing the stability of a Cisco router to a Microsoft server? Right, enough said. So I'm going to configure this router as a DHCP server, but before we even begin, we've got to figure out what is our local subnet? What is our network inside of this office? Most likely you have one already, but I'm going to bring up this router and just do a quick landscape of this. Let's do a show IP interface brief, and we've got nothing. No IP addresses anywhere, so let's just say this is the network of 10.1.1.0 slash 24. Slash 24, a lot of you know this is 255.255.255.0, right? Normal class C subnet mask. So I'm going to go into this router. First off and give it an IP address. We'll say uh, interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 IP address 10.1.1.1 .1 .1 .1, 255.255.0 no shutdown. Got to remember that or else nothing works. Now we can start configuring our DHCP. The biggest thing to remember on this router is that Cisco wants you to exclude the addresses before you actually tell it what addresses to hand out. I know it's a little weird but we have to go in and say IP DHCP DHCP excluded addresses and we have to say okay well I don't what, what I don't want to hand out is 10.1.1.1 cuz obviously I don't want to give somebody my IP address the router okay the router's smart enough not to do that but still it's good to put it in there and I'll go all the way up to 10.1.1. we'll say 10 but well, what's that well maybe that's a printer or that's a switch or a wireless access point something that has a static IP address so I'm not going to hand out these first 10 addresses but everything after that is fair game okay so now we can Figure a DHCP pool. IP DHCP pool, and then it's going to ask for a name. Like, what do you want to name this thing? It can be any name that you want to uh, at all. It is case sensitive, though, so we'll just call it micro pool. You go into that, and now we have all of our DHCP options. Core options include, number one, I'm going to put the default router in there. Because when I hand out IP addresses to these clients, I'm going to want to tell them, I'm the exit point. Dot one, come here, get to me, I'll get you to the internet, I'll help you out, buddy. So I'll say default router 10.1.1.1. I also got to give them some good DNS settings, because they're not going to be able to resolve the names on the internet, like Google.com, or even better, CBTNuggets.com, without a DNS server. Now, we all know that there are some really handy DNS servers that we're going to remember, right? Forever, ever, and ever. It's 4.2.2.2, which is a uh, university over in California, and 4.2.2.3, which is another, well, it's the same place, actually, but they have a couple of DNS servers that anybody can use, and just for good measure, we'll even give them a third one, 8.8.8.8, one that's totally different, but totally easy to remember, Google uh, as a DNS server. Enter. So now we've got the default router, we've got the DNS server. What's last is going to be the scope itself. I need to say network. Uh, and we'll give it what, you know, essentially the range of addresses to hand out. 10.1.1.0, you know, that's the, the name of our network, the name of our little office. Then we can type in our network mask in either prefix length or mask form. This is one of the rare commands in all Cisco that actually lets you do that. Or you can type in, uh, not that, but 255.255.255.0, whatever feels warm and fuzzy to you, that's totally fine. That's why we have to exclude the addresses first. Notice, I can't type in a range there. I just say, this is the network that I want to hand out, and I am good. Good to go. But wait, it's one thing to think it's working, but how do I know it's working? Well, I'm going to use the command show IP DHCP binding and... Oh, that's so awesome! Right there I can see 10.1.1.1. 11 has been handed out. Uh, matter of fact, it, exp it expires on March 2nd, 2002. This is an old uh, recording. I got to set the clock on my router. Uh, and, and and now we're actually handing out IP addresses to the clients uh, in less than five minutes. That's, that's amazing. So the last thing I would have to do is set up that router for NAT, but that is the story of another micro nugget. For now, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.